So that's the reason we have to keep this polythene bag near the kitchen window. Okay, na? little amount of humidity is also needed to grow this rhizopus from this bread. So that's the reason these all the conditions are available in the kitchen window. So we have to keep this bag near the kitchen window. Okay. So, <clears throat> from this bread, two to three days onwards, the rhizopus started to grow, or common mold started to grow. So, every day, or after two days, or after three days. We have to sprinkle a little amount of water on this bread. Why? Because this bread, it should not be dried up. 
So that's the reason every day or after two days once we have to keep little amount of water on this bread. Okay. So at least we have to like that nearly 10 days. After 10 days, if you observe this bread, there is a, a whitish thread like structures, whitish thread like structures and black dots on this thread or green colored dots. We have to see on this bread. Okay. Do you know what is that? Do you know what is that? That may be rhizopus or also called common mold. What is this? Common mold. With this rhizopus, we will do an activity. So, now we will do the activity with this rhizopus. How? Now we are having common mold sample. Is it right? So with that sample, we are doing this lab activity. So what is our lab activity? What is the main aim? That is observation of rhizopus or common mold under microscope. So what are the materials are needed for doing this experiment? Mold sample already we have glass slide, cover slip and water and gloves is also needed for doing this experiment. Procedure. First of all, we take a slide. On that slide, this is slide. On this slide, we have to keep it on the sample which we collected from the bread. Is uh, bread. So the bread sample we have to keep it on the slide. So actually in this sample what is there we don't know. We want to see now with the help of microscope. So bread sample we have to keep it on the slide and also little amount of water also we have to keep it on the sample. Then on the sample we have to cover the cover slip. We have to cover the cover slip. This is cover slip. So when we keep the cover slip on the object or sample, the water comes out. The water comes out. So that water we have to clean with a bottling paper or filter paper. Okay. After that, after that, we have to keep this slide under the microscope. Then when we keep this slide under the microscope, now we are observing. When we are observing, what observations we find out? That is called observation. That is called observation. When we are seeing or when we observe, the common mold the common bread mold it appears to our naked eye. I can the common mold. How? For example, it consists of a fine thread like projections. Common, common bread mold consists of fine thread like projections. This is called fine thread like projections they are called hyphae what is this hyphae and also a thin stem from this hyphae a thin stem a thin stem like this On the top of the stem, on the top of the stem, the stem is having a knob-like structures. They are called 
sporangium what is this sporangium this is called a knoblex structure a knoblex structure that is called sporangium what is this sporangium sporangium so in this sporangium in this sporangium there are some minute structures they are called spores what is this spores when the spores are fully developed in the sporangium the sporangium break up the sporangium break up and the spores are releasing into the atmosphere or releasing into the air then when it is fall down if the spores are falling down in a suitable atmosphere for growing immediately the spores are growing and the new rhizopus develop or the new common mold develops okay na this is about rhizopus which we have to see on the bread which we have to see on the bread this is about lab activity what is that observation of rhizopus or common mold with the help of microscope this is very very important lab activity for your public examination okay na next sporophyll what is that <coughs> sporophyll what is sporophyll the leaf of spores are called sporophyll and pernumbopaya ka akile manu em antavandi sporophyll okay na so actually fern plants also produce spores ferns also produce spores if you observe the lower surface of the fern leaf and the upper ek adugu bag if you observe there are some dot like structures are there there are some dot like structures are there these dot like structures are called sporangia or sporangium so in this sporangium there are spores if you rapture this sporangium this sporangium rapture from this sporangium there are some spores are comes out if you observe with magnifying lens we will find spores if the spores are fallen down for this spores if the suitable atmosphere or a suitable atmosphere is available this spores is developed as a new fern plant okay now up to now we are discussing about asexual reproduction the types of asexual reproduction okay now we will see sexual reproduction in plants sexual reproduction in plants on this world 270000 flowering species plants are there the flowers are the sexual reproductive part in plants the flowers are the sexual reproductive parts of plant from this flowers only the seeds are produced from the small plant to the tall plant or big plant from the small seeds base for the plant even the big plant or small plant whatever it may be the base of the plant the origin of the plant is seed the seeds are produced from the flowers by sexual reproduction before entering into the sexual reproduction in plants we will see the structure of flower we will see the structure of 
flower. There are four rows in a flower. <coughs> four rows means naalugu walayar. Ok flower no naalugu walayar ante. First row, second row, third row and fourth row. First row, second row, third row and fourth row. There are four rows are there in a flower. If you clearly observe the first row that is green in color that is green in color this is called cax this is also called as sepals the first row or the first part in the flower that is called calyx or sepal what is the use of this calyx or sepal this calyx or sepal will give production to the inner parts of the flower. It will give production to all parts of the flower. Why? Because this is the outer layer of the flower. Have you seen rose flower? Yeah. Under the rose flower, there is a green colored pot is there. That green colored pot is called calyx. Okay. Next. The second row. The second row is called petals. This is called petals. This petals is also called as corolla. What is that? Corolla. What is the use of this corolla? If you observe, so many petals, they are having attractive colors. Some of the petals are, they are having good smell. Attractive color or giving good smell. For what? For attracting insects. For attracting insects for pollination for pollination if it is attractive color automatically the insects are come to this flower if it is good smell the insects it come towards this flower is it right for what for pollination for pollination that is the second row of this flower the third row the third row. Do you know what is this third row? That is male reproductive part. What is that? Male reproductive parts. The male reproductive part is also called as andrisium. What is that? <coughs> andrisium. If you observe this andrisium, in this andrisium there are two parts. The first one is called stamen. The first one is called stamen and the second one is called anther. Anther and stamen combined together is called andrisium. On the top of the stamen there is a ball like structure. This structure name is called andrisium. Sorry. Uh, anther. What is that? Anther. In the anther the pollen grains are produced. In this anther, the pollen grains produce. When the pollen grains are fully developed in the anther, the anther break up and the pollen grains are releasing into the atmosphere. This is about male reproductive part in flower. The male reproductive part in flower is also called as andrisium. What is that? Andrisium. The last one, the last, last row is called Gynantium. What is that? Gynantium. If you see this gynantium, we can find out three parts in this gynantium. What are the three parts? The first one is called stigma. The second one is called style. The third one is called wavari. Wavari inside the wavari there are ovules. Wavari, stigma. Style. The three, 
Three combined together is called gynantium. Gynantium is also called as fistel. Gynantium is also called as fistel. So, if you observe this vowry, in this vowry there are some small ball-like structures are there. They are called ovules. It means in the vowry there are ovules are present. The topmost part, it's a ball-like structure. This is called a stigma. There is thread-like structure. This is called a style. So these three parts combined together is called gynantium. Gynantium is the female reproductive part in flower. Okay. Na? So all together, how many rows are there in a flower? There are four rows are there in a flower. The first part is called calyx. The second part is called corolla. The third part is called male reproductive part is called gynandrisium. The fourth one is called gynandrisium is also called as female reproductive part. This is about structure of flower. Structure of flower. Okay. Next. Here the flowers are two types. Flowers are Two types. What are they? The first one is called unisexual flower. What is that? Unisexual flower. Uni means single. Uni means single. It means there are two reproductive parts are there in the flower. Is it right? For example, if you see the datura, this is called datura flower. In this dandura flower, female reproductive part is there as well as male reproductive part also is there in one flower. It means the male and female reproductive parts both are in one flower. Such kind of flowers are called bisexual flower. What is that? Bisexual flower. Bi means two. Two means what are the two here? Male reproductive part and female reproductive part in one flower. They are called bisexual flower. Example, Dattura. What is this? Dattura and the Umetta. But some of the flowers, this both reproductive parts are not in one flower. Some flowers only they are having female reproductive part. Some flower they are having only male reproductive part. It means the single, single, single reproductive parts are having only. Not both reproductive parts are not in one flower. They are separate. The male flower is separate and female flower is separate. So such kind of flowers are called unisexual flowers. Example, better girl. What is it? Bottle grown and also papaya. If we are to magajet means are a pushpalu magapushpalu separate in this plant in these plants. So that's the reason the plants are called bisexual plants. The flowers are sorry, unisexual flowers. The plants are called unisexual plants. Okay. This is about bisexual and unisexual. Next self pollination what is self pollination self pollination means for example this is a flower this is a flower actually in one plant this is a plant so such kind of flower so many are there in one plant is it right such kind of flowers, so many are there in one plant. So actually, sometimes what will happen? Here there is a flower. Here there is a flower. In this flower, male reproductive part is there. Female reproductive part is there. 
Here also male reproductive part is there, female reproductive part is there. Both flowers in one plant. Both flowers in one plant. Sometimes, do you know what will happen? From this male reproductive part, the pollen grains are releasing and these pollen grains are reaches to the stigma of the same plant flower. And the other one another flower lo undi to undi stigma reach on the man. Adam in that. You rendu flower lo okay moko is a man in jay. You moko lo woko flower lo unna to undi pollen rays anthemic pollen rays release a ade moko lo unna to undi. Where a flower low on a stigma reach of the and a female reproductive part and reach of the and a ade mokolo injured nikra pollination jurutundi ade mokolo on a twenty male ade mokolo on a female to pollen pollination and the jurutundi that pollination is called self pollination the pollination is called self pollination. But sometimes same plant, same plants side by side, so many are there. Same plants. So here one datra plant, here one more datra plant. These pollen grains are reaches to the another plant female reproductive part. This pollen grains are reaches to the another plant flower that is called stigma. It reaches to the stigma of the another plant flower. And in the low wounded when pollen grains, the pakana wounded when the very mokkame the one to twenty female reproductive part, the one the part of some one in just stigma reach of the animal. Stigma reach in the end of the pollination jaritin mana. So such kind of pollination is called cross pollination. The name of the cross pollination. Most of the plants they want to do the cross pollination only. Because of the cross pollination only, the new generations, the new varieties are produced. Indra de Indra de polish there is to me. New varieties are not produced. New varieties means the quarter action are also there. Man, if we are doing Indra de Indra de, the quarter action are there. So that's the reason most of the plants they want to do the cross pollination. Okay, this is about unisexual, bisexual. Self pollination and cross pollination. In the next class, we will see the how this pollination takes place in the flower. Okay, until then.